and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to sit with you mamas and talk about three ways that I am preparing for a year-round school year without burning out. If you'd like to hear more, then let's get started. Hey you, did you hit that play button for the very first time? Well, welcome to the channel. I'm Tasha. This is Tasha Pivots where we talk about all things mamahood and homeschool and how I'm pivoting through this journey. And I am so glad that you chose to hang out with us today. As you can see, I've got my water. I add a little lemon, you know, make it a little cute. I feel summer vibes already coming. Uh, but I'm honestly just trying to stay hydrated and the cuter my glass looks and the cuter it just with this fresh squeeze of lemon, it makes me want to drink my water. So, uh, yes, three ways. As we, I was preparing um, some curriculums that just came in and I was like, okay, I want to put these aside. And I was thinking, okay, wow, this is going to be our first official year of us doing a year around school year. And then in the beginning of this year, I shared with you guys in a video where I have taken our family and switched our homeschool from a semester system to a quarter system. And you can check that out here in the iCart after this video if you like. Uh, but we, I break down how I built that schedule out, why it works for us, and what it allows us to do when it comes to um, doing assessment and making sure that we're on the right course to move forward. With that, I could see that if you've never homeschooled or if you're even dabbling with the idea that you would do year round, you may feel overwhelmed or you may feel like I'm going to burn out because I already feel the burnout now. And so uh, I wanted to share with you some three practical ways that I am really exercising through this process um, as we are entering, we are phasing into finishing up and wrapping up our school year now for 2020, 2021. And we are going to merge into the school year for 2021, 2022. That is a whole mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, and with that, uh, I want to say everything is different. You have to do what's best for your family, and this is simply what's best for ours. Uh, with my girls, instead of giving them the, the traditional summer off like we've done in the past, uh, I recognize that my children, unless they have a heavily engaged summer or a heavily engaged time, then they get bored easily. Um, and they're often starting to now ask, what are we doing next? And then we also find that we spend a lot of time having to do a lot of retention and a lot of um, review of just what did we learn in the last three months of school before we took that time off. And so in a, to kind of avoid that, this is why the year round kind of drew us more in. And so the first thing I do to avoid any type of burnout um, is I slow down. I slow down significantly starting around April. Um, I take and look at our books. I see what the rest of our lessons look like. And instead of me trying to cram everything in to wrap it all up before June 1st, I actually let it spread out to the second week of June. And then I give my children the three weeks off before July. And so that has been, a, I think that is going to be a more, um, more relaxing, more stress-free way of entering into homeschool for the new year. And also for them to know that like, yes, you get a little bit of a breather, um, even throughout the lesson plans that we're doing now, because, you know, we kind of go hard at the beginning of the year. We get really excited because it's a new year. We took the holiday off and now we're ready to rare and go, but then we like get through the three months and then we burn out again. And so in order to not go through that process, I rather, like I said, look at all the lessons, slow down, only choose to do what we need to do in that day. If the school day is only going to be four hours for that day, it's only going to be four hours. If it's going to be where we are just in the motion of the ocean of doing a lesson, then we will keep going until we wrap it up. Um, and it just has been like for me, just a weight off my shoulders to not feel like I need to hair up and finish this because I've got to give them this allotted time. No. Slow down. Slow down is great. Uh, second, I leave uh, room and space for time off. Uh, with that, I, I shared with you guys again in that quarter to semester format where it gives me time to review with my kids, but it also allows me to fit in space for, you know, staycations or um, little trips that I can plan in between. And even though we will take a certain amount of time off in June, 
Uh, even if we wanted to do something where we said, you know what, we're only going to do school for three days this week and we're going to take the rest of the week and do something else, that's okay. And it's very helpful for me to not only listen to how my kids are responding because they're not robots, right? So sometimes they're going to be heavily excited about school and they're going to arrive each day ready to go. And then we'll have that off week where everyone is in their emotions, everyone is fed up, do not want to sit at the table does not want to even engage in any type of learning. And so when I start to have those moments, then I recognize that maybe we need to change our scenery. And maybe we need to, uh, we need to take school outside today. Or maybe I flip my schedule completely around. Instead of us doing morning time Bible study at the table, I'm taking us out to breakfast and we're gonna sit and just have conversation. And so I, those things have avoided me to not be in burnout even now, and I'm going to continue to do that moving forward. So first, uh, slowing down. Second, leave room for time off and even changing up. I kind of added like a sub one in, one in there. And then a third is just um, creating time with my children to just really have time with my children, not just we just do school and then it's nighttime routine or, you know, and then the day is wrapped up, but really trying to find intentional time to just play with my kids. Um, I recognize that they are seven and three and I won't get that much time with them. And I sometimes have to reel myself back into that. I, I don't naturally go there all the time, but recently I've been really trying to be intentional with like, have I played with the kids at all today? And even if I didn't do it today, I'm, you know, tomorrow, like, what do we have on our schedule? How can I, you know, maybe we're not going to do this assignment today, but we're just going to find time to play because then it allows me not to get burnt out. And it also allows my children not to get burnt out. And so even if I made something fun be, uh, or educational and we still have a learning, uh, environment or opportunity there but just it doesn't have to feel like it's um, carved out in a box or that it has to be stressful. And so those are my three ways, guys. I hope that that has encouraged you um, and helps you kind of change your perspective when it comes to just a year-round homeschool or even if you're doing a traditional schedule for the new year, um, that you know that burnout is real, but we can kind of catch it if we just leave space for certain things throughout our overall school year you'll enjoy it far more so i thank you for hanging out with me today if you like this video give it a warm thumbs up and if you have any other ways that you actually do uh, to avoid any type of burnout put it in the comments below you know i love to see those i love talking with you guys and until next time i'll see you on the next video i'll talk to you later bye